Today with Claire Byrne on RTE Radio 1 with Opal, the all-new Opal Mocha. With a new visor front face and pure panel interior, this is Opal. Today with Claire Byrne on RTE Radio 1. The much lauded BBC police drama Line of Duty got a lot of people talking about slang. Viewers became obsessed with the colourful turn of phrase and the Irishisms which were associated with Adrian Dunbar's character, Superintendent Ted Hastings. Let's remind ourselves of some of those. I'm interested in one thing and one thing only, and that's bent covers. And we will be left holding a sprat when we should have landed a micro. All you wish. He will not leave a stone unturned. I have been shifting heaven and earth. Plus, you were going like the clappers. We weren't born yesterday, fella. And I don't care whether it's one rotten apple or the whole bloody barrel. Well, back to the cold face the Peria. Unless you've got some more eggs sucking tips for your granny. I didn't float up the lagging on a bubble. Oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Mother of God. So why are we obsessed and protective of slang on our small island? Well, to talk more about this, I'm joined in the studio by Colm O'Regan, broadcaster and host of Colm O'Regan Wants a Word. On the line, Martin Beans Ward, stand-up comic, writer and podcaster, and Nuala McKeever, comedy writer and performer. You're all very welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. What is slang, Colm? Uh, well, <laughs> do, uh, do you have any other questions, actually? Uh, <laughs> no. It's, it's, it's a big question and it's an interesting one because what is one person's slang was originally somebody else's language. So I think it's, it's easy language. It's stuff that uh, allows people to communicate in a way that almost they recognise where they're from, That's even as it. soon as they I, open their mouth. I think it's a code. It says, I know where you're from. We know each other. We have a bond here from the get go. Exactly, yeah. And uh, it, it's funny, like for me, if I'm, I'm from Cork, but uh, I've been no. living. Yeah, uh, but I, I moved away. I moved away because I couldn't get work. Uh, I moved to <laughs> Dublin. And but when I meet people from Cork, uh, straight away, the slang level goes up because I think I know I'm among my own people. Yeah. So there, there is definitely there's definitely a bit of code going on. OK, Martin, let's talk about uh, greetings, right? When you meet someone, first of all, because that's a good way, really, of, of demonstrating the differences between the slang that people have. How would you greet another person if you met them on a the street? Uh, <clears throat> usually from two, two metres away. Uh, let's start, <laughs> good. Start, start off with that. <laughs> <laughs> let's get the message out there. Um well, for, see, I, I think in Ireland it's it's all the same, really, isn't it? It's kind of like, what's the crack? What's the story? Any crack with you? Those type of things. Um, see, I, I, I suppose I'm lucky. You see, I come from the travelling community, but I'm also from a little town called Tume in the west of uh, Ireland, mm -hmm. in Galway, uh, which is in East Galway. And we would have a slang there as well, which is kind of like a... It's like pig Latin, basically. So we would say something like "Wegas to stay, or she gave me way guide." So something like that. What? <laughs> to kind of exactly, <laughs> ex exactly. Claire. I'm excluded. <laughs> I I have no idea what you're saying. You can bet your life you're excluded, Claire. You know? <laughs> uh, which is basically well, what's the crack with you? Okay. Um, so it's kind of like. I suppose, as as Colm said there, it is it is kind of like uh, it, it. You know, the words do come from something. It's a, it's a type of Creole, maybe. I don't know if, you, if you, I, something that confuses me a little bit. And I'm from Leash, as people may know. But I find in the West, when people meet you, they go well, and I see that as a question. I don't really know what the answer is. Like, what is the answer to well with a question mark at the end? You just say well, man. <laughs> <laughs> write that down. Write that down for the next time. It, it also depends on who you're talking to. Like if you're if you're approaching a gang of people leaning against a wall, you might say "hoard them in, hoard the leads." You know, "how's right. it going?" Or indeed, a gra not a bad day for it, whatever it might be. What you is know? it? Yeah, yeah that's exactly. the, another question that we don't need to answer. And Nula, uh, how are you? Thanks very much for joining us in Belfast. I'm sticking out, sticking out, <laughs> and dead on. We would probably say up here as a, as um, hello. Well, no, no, that would be the answer. The question would be oh, about you, okay. which means what about you? But in the country up here, would say, how's she cutting? But uh, I was listening to the lads there and I love the one in Derry. Weirdly, they greet you a bit like you said with well. They say, yes, as in, <laughs> yes, Nula, as if you've been asked the question in advance. But even weirder, there's people, I don't know if it's Derry, Donegal or where, but they address you like this. So say it to me, they'll come up and say, well, how's Nula? Right. <laughs> Which I'm always thinking, well, she's OK. She's wondering why she's being in a dress in the third person when she's standing right in front of you. And but is, apart from that, she's dead on. And is Nuna <laughs> expected to answer that when you get when you're asked? Yeah, well, okay. yeah she, you kind of go, well, she, she's just here. She, she's looking, she's, as I would say, sticking out her dead on. Yeah. <laughs> 
do you get that column? Yeah, yes column as a as hello. Uh, not not yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I one the problem for me now is that no matter how I'm addressed, is that the pandemic has brought a halt to actually how to reply. It's like small talk has disappeared. So all you can reply now is oh sure sure look this is it as in a general discussion of the whole situation. Uh, so I, I think we need to get back to small talk classes in order to reply to no matter how you're asked whether it's well yes how she cutting or any of those it's what you say next without saying well to be honest uh, things are tough because you can't say that in Ireland like you can't be going in with the big conversation yeah, so. no, nobody wants an answer really no that, we, do we don't really care how yeah, you are we're just trying to start talking you, you really have to worry when somebody addresses you and the first word isn't yes it's no no column <laughs> <laughs> I think as kids we all grew up with it no no <laughs> can we talk about mothers uh, and mammy because that's uh, you know everyone says the Irish mammy uh, column you know that's that's what we call our mothers but it's not all we call our mothers right no, we are. Well, I called my mother Mama. I think I only admitted in open uh, as an adult. <laughs> but I mean, there's also like uh, there's a bit of kind of re- reverse snobbery where people say if you call your mother Mom, that it's somehow an Americanization. When in fact, the further often if you go into West Kerry or in parts of Cork, people say Mom as well. But that comes from the Irish way of saying Mam. So mommy. It's, yeah, mommy or whatever. So it's a uh, it it's interesting how it's not that simple. And then of course in in Dublin there's lots of mas and mams. And then there are some people who you hear them say ma'am and you go, I don't think you were a ma'am person. I think you're a mum person. I, mm. I think you're only looking for a bit of authenticity there. So it's, it's a very... Mum is English, invo- isn't it? Mum is English. It's a, bit, it's a bit more English, yeah. Um, and, but the, the interesting thing is there's less dad ones. There's da and dad and daddy, but there's no duds. Well, you know, depending on <laughs> what he was like. But uh, there, are, there are, you know, there's less choice. And Martin, what about you on, on the mother front? <laughs> Ma'am, so, okay, so mammy? I'm, no, it's mummy. And, M- mommy. and uh, yeah, and and in the phone it's saved as mom, just in case she ever rings while I'm in company, okay. uh, because I because I never say mommy, and if she's in a bad mood, we just call her mom cross, which is not too far away from where I'm living. <laughs> and just, I mean, you you mentioned your background, your travelling community background, Martin, and you have slang, as I said earlier, that we we don't understand. Would you say? Um, well, there's a lot of things you don't understand, to be fair, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but let's, let's, let's focus on the language, I suppose. Um, yeah, we're like, well, look, we'd have shelter or cant uh, yeah. or the gammon. Um, <clears throat> and what's, well, I suppose what's really good about that is the language is kind of crossed over. Uh, and again, going back to what Colm said, because Colm's great for jumping in there and kind of stealing my words at the beginning. <laughs> Typical Corkonian, you know, because they've robbed our language. That's right, right so yeah. Have, Talk it down. Um, and what, what are the cant words that you say have crossed over? Oh, I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, so you would be talking about the likes of Tome, Gammy, Bjor, uh, Fien, Lush. Um, is, Gammy a can, is Gammy a cant word? Well, I've been brought up to think it was anyway. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't... Um, actually, that's a good question because I think the word Gammy um, may have been stolen by the travellers. Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I used Gammy growing up. I often remember we were doing the play by the Western world and there's a quote in it saying, oh, for a young man with a such and such and a gamey heart and one of the lads was reading out saying oh for a young man with a gammy heart uh, so <laughs> we definitely used and we used it's, I only found out years later that I was using Fien and Bjor and Sham that they actually were traveller words so I'm giving them back now uh, I'm sorry for taking them Martin <laughs> Sham as in fake no as in a man or a, a oh, young man. lad or a fella you know so again it's it's, um, it's a good way of, it's a good way of rec- it's, I think you can't stop people from using words but you, it's always good to recognise where they came from uh, because they are a way of preserving culture. There's a word for shoes, isn't there, Martin? Gullimers. Gullimers, yes. Am I yes. saying that right? Yes. But Ooh, that's, been talking to? But there's an abbreviation <laughs> uh, 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 column that's gullies. used in... Yeah, gullies. That's used in Cork, is it? I don't know. What, we, we had rubber dollies. Uh, I don't know if we had we gullies. Did we have gullies? I don't think we took gullies. Uh, uh, we, took, we took a lot in Cork, but I don't think we took... Well, I didn't use them anyway. Um, I didn't get rubber dollies until after my confirmation. It was all sensible shoes up until then. And Nuala, some of the northern slang that you're familiar with that me, we might not be, uh, take us oh. through some of that. So someone with Where a Where do you want to start? Well, so, you're just talking about gullies. Is that shoes? Like trainers, we call them goodies, which I presume is from gut because they were probably made of rubber. So gut, goodies. Goodies with like two Ds, like G-U-D-D-Y. Yeah, you're goodies. Okay. Yeah, you're okay. goodies. <laughs> Sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? <laughs> my favourite kind of phrase is good Ted. We were making lists of things that Ted Hastings should have had. One of my favourites, I didn't originate it. It was a, a comedy duo up here. McKay and Grimes, Connor Grimes. I heard him saying the do sort of culties. Do you say culties? You know, country people. Culties. And yeah. he instead of calm down, he was 
Chill the digger, chill the digger, <laughs> which is great. Like, I have encouraged people in America to adopt chill the digger. Um, I think it's funny, you know, things don't really relate that. You were all speaking away there about various words, and honest to God, it could have been a different language. You know, we are a country divided by one language, really. Yeah, do, you call, do you call an ice cream cone a poke? No. no. Oh, God. <laughs> oh well. So if you come Martin, here, was you that can no from you as well? at least say fancy a poke to somebody, and they will not slap you around the beak. Right. The beak being the face. Well, in Cork, if you uh, ask fancy a poke, they'd give you a flake, but that wouldn't be a piece of chocolate. That would be a slap across the head. So well, it's that's just what I'm saying. we're going. Yeah, we're going. We're going to need. Um, we're going to need a tribunal for this. I think. <laughs> Nuna, there was, need a bigger boat. <laughs> Nuna, there was one phrase you have, which we have as well, where I'm from. Don't uh, say I'm going into the shop to buy a cake before I go to visit someone because I. Don't don't turn up with one arm longer than the other. Yeah, well, up here, uh, again, more the country version would be you don't want to turn up with two arms to one length. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. It's just such a visual thing. Un- un- unless you bring you two wanna... cakes. That's, that, that's one way out well, of it. There's, uh, and they're equi- equal, equal weight, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be a big gansh at an awkward person. What's, a, what's a scalf? Like now we're, what? What's a scalf? A scalf is, um, yeah, that, I think that we get a lot of our words here from Ulster Scots, which is really colourful, lovely phrases like ganch and that. A scalf is a wee, what, I don't know what you call it, a wee bit of wood that you get under your skin, you know, what so, do you call it? So is it someone who's troublesome maybe or someone who's an irritation then? Like a splinter? No, a, no, splinter. The, a splinter. Yeah, no, the actual thing would be called a scalf. It's just that. It's not a slang word for another person. But, you know, that, that's just a thing on its own. That is just a, an Ulster Scotsism. Um, in terms of being drunk, I don't know how many of our words are similar and which are northern or which. Do you say langard? Oh, we do in Cork. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Blocked. Well, uh, well, we, uh, blocked, we, we claim stoches. we invented blocked. We were blocked and stoches. Um, yeah, and snattered, we would say up here. <laughs> snappered for drunk, is it? Snattered like oh, snattered. So snattered like you're snattery <laughs> drunk. <laughs> this is very charming. I'm sure we have some local ones, some lovely ones. I too. know, but I do, I do like this. I do like having uh, new words to describe things that um, we, we may not have come across before. And Martin, social media, I mean, I was looking at a meme yesterday which was showing you how we wave at people when we meet them in a car, right? And I was thinking about when it comes to slang, does social media help preserve a lot of slang which wouldn't be written down otherwise? It's just the spoken word prior to social media. I think social media it goes a, it goes a long way in um, introducing little words that would be, I suppose, local to small towns and then bringing it across across the country. Um, so, like, on one, on one hand, we'd like to preserve you know little little words like that, like like for example, words from Belfast like blocks, and you'd have language in Cork, and we'd have goosed or or lushed in, in, in around Galway. So it's it's I suppose social media does a lot in kind of promoting those words. And I think this should be celebrated in, in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 a pity I suppose that sometimes uh, when you're on social media and you're looking at, at traveller words and then people are saying like uh, no, not name anyone, but Longford. They tend to rob all of our words as well. <laughs> they are saying that, that they own uh, that uh, they own all the tomb slang and uh, the sham. The word sham they reckon comes from Longford. And there's a massive feud going on there at the moment on social media between Longford. But that's and an issue because I don't think you're allowed to steal slang words from other parts of the country. Like like. Uh-huh. L- some Cork ones, uh, Colm. I mean, you, if you're from Dublin, you can't use some of those words. You're just not allowed. Well, it's I suppose it's it's, it's also tied up with accent. So uh, I remember when I was starting out in comedy and I'd say I was from Cork and then somebody from, you know, Black Rock would say, oh, Langer. And I'd like, that word, take that word out of your, <laughs> out of your Soko Do mouth. It just does not fit. Like, you know, that's obviously I'm being... Uh, facetious. You can, of course, say it, but I will call the guards. Um, and <laughs> like, because it has to go with the accent. I don't even use it unless I'm corking up my accent because it's it's almost like a Welsh double L. It's like clangor. Like yes, it's, it's like it some, ha- it's like a it's like an opera singer singing folk tunes. You know the way they go in the Banbridge town in the county <laughs> town, and you just go stop. Yeah. Uh, I would never say bleeding for in Dub- in, for Dublin. It no, just you wouldn't would get sound, away with that, wouldn't yeah. sound right. Um, might say poxy because we used to say it in Cork, but even then I feel we'd only be borrowing it. So sometimes it's wrapped up in accent. And the main thing is, like, if you're going to use it, don't say it was you who started it. Like, just pay tribute to wherever the word mm-hmm. came well, from. Well, that I explains think. why the battle is going on, Martin, over who owns what, you know. Well, actually, just a quick question. What what do you guys call uh, members of Ungardishi Corner? 
in Cork it was the shades you'd get a chase same, off, yeah, a chase off the shades yeah yeah or the uh, law <laughs> we were like the, the clash the we fought the law <laughs> in, in Limerick apparently according to a listener runners or shoes are called tackies now we're all drawing a blank on that a cranky person in Cork says another listener is a tawny wire oh a thorny wire <laughs> does that make sense <laughs> to you it's well, written as, as tawny yeah, when you were saying there, uh, Claire, about writing stuff on social media, I put out a wee thing on Facebook saying to people, if you've any good examples, let me know. And you want to see the number of spellings <laughs> of the same words because people have never seen them written down, so everybody's just making it up as they go along. That's interesting, but, isn't it? But it's lovely if you if you follow, you know, like you said there, like if somebody wrote Tawny, T-A-W-N-Y, that could disappear into the future and nobody would ever realise where it came from. So it's good to preserve the, the history of it, isn't it? Yeah, I'm the word era or yera in Cork and carry, I'd never seen it written anywhere apart from in, you know, Osgoelga, mm-hmm. D-H-E-R-A, you'd see it. But in Cork, we'd say era, which is E-R-A. So is that if I said to you, how are you? And you go, era? Era, yeah, yeah. exactly. Whereas but in I, leash, we'd say era. Uh, yeah. And, and what does it yeah, mean? What does actually. it mean? It just ah, means nothing that really. the weight nothing of really. world, <laughs> I mean, anything, the weight of world is on my shoulders and my wife has left me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ah, lots sure, of things. You, you, know, you know how it is. You yeah. know yourself. Exactly. You know come with me to the pub and I'll open up after uh, four pints. That's kind of the, uh, the well, there's so much laden in it. But so, so where did they say yera? Did you say yera? So yera is more... Kerry and then era without the yeah is I think is Corkish but I'd never seen it written as ERA until Facebook Mm -hmm. and because we were always afraid oh texting is going to ruin it's going to homogenise language and it has to a certain extent and autocorrect forces you won't let you write yera you know but having said that like as as you're saying it's written down somewhere it's now it's googleable if you google words that you vaguely remember from childhood you'll find them they weren't written in books in 1985. They were written on Twitter, you know, two weeks ago. And that's, you know, that's only to be celebrated. I and think. what about la in Cork at the end of a sentence? What is that? What, well, how do you use it? Well, I've seen this. Uh, Put la into a sentence for me. Well, stay de la, right? And uh, that's, you know, look at, look at the condition that you are in or in a state of him even more, state of him la. Now, this is classic Cork to claim that this gives that there's a heritage to this so I've seen people say that it's actually from Huguenot and the French la at the end of a sentence like there <laughs> so, so we're going to we're going to claim <laughs> that it, say yeah and we're definitely going to keep it as being French because it gives us a certain je ne sais quoi uh, so I'm, I'm having that it's like when my my uncle used to say that because his surname was Horgan that we came from Aragon in Spain it's basically anything to get off the island that's what we're saying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anything with a bit of sort of romanticism uh, attached and exoticism um, Martin, I want to talk to you about intensifiers. So there's one I know that you use. It's tome. What does that mean? Is it uh, good or fantastic? Do you add it before a describing word? Uh, it's, it's, all, it's all of that. It's like uh, that, that's, a, that's a tome fiend or that's a tome bior, tome lark. You know, it's like that's a very good or cool or brilliant thing. Uh, it would be the opposite to gammy, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and what's a lark? You mentioned lark there. So that, that'd be a car. So if I was to say something like... Uh, uh, columns of Tom Fiend, but the the Gammy Fiends from Cork, the Whitten the Cant Began from the Minkery. So <laughs> <laughs> we are, in fairness, we are. I was, thinking, I was so just col- thinking that very thing. <laughs> <laughs> so so basically, Columns a very nice guy, but but the Fiends from Cork are Whitten the Cant, which would be they'd be talking the Cant or speaking the Cant, and Began from the Minkery. So that'd be stealing from the travellers. Ooh. Controversial. It's, it's that's not, it's a whole other language. It's that's a whole other language. Well, I, slang. That's uh, a whole other language. I, that's a, we would say up here something's a lot. You'd say it's a whole handling. Well, there's a whole handling going on there. Yeah, there's a lovely musicality to it, though. Um, would you say the sentence for me again, Martin? Of which one? The Gammy Fiends from yeah, Cork? Yeah, yeah. The whole thing. The can- oh, okay, so the Gammy Fiends from Cork. And they're not that Gammy at all. They're Tome <laughs> Fiends. So let's be clear. I have a lot of Corkonian friends. Are you, are you um, repeating the libel, Martin, is what we're saying? <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm putting it into the thing that they're at the beginning, you know. <laughs> and, the Gammy Fiends are the Tome Fiends from Cork or Whidden the Cant or the Shelter. And they're vegan from the Minkery. So that would be the, they're, they're speaking the Cant, which is Shelter or the language yeah. of, of the travellers. And they're vegan from the Minkery. And Minkery uh, is the actual shelter word to describe travellers because, of course, travellers were much more than nomadic people. So the, the actual all-encompassing word to describe the community would actually be Minkery. And in some communities with, or some areas of the country would say Pavi um, <clears throat> and vegan. Be- so vegan is to steal. So the Gammy fiends from Cork are hidden the canton to shelter and they're vegan from the Minkery. 
Yeah, you're getting awful abuse there, Colin. Um, uh, I'm, in- get, I'm getting fair spat here, no clear after that. Like, <laughs> you're not taking that at all. Fair, fair, fair spat, is it? Yeah, very. That's it's very that's, fair. I mean, fierce is a lot in Ireland, a lot over, but fierce would we definitely that's what I grew up with fierce yeah, we and love savage fierce. Yeah. Love fierce but we'd also say well. bad words to describe good things so somebody would be desperate nice mm-hmm. um, <laughs> you know, so somebody would be a desperate housewife here might be somebody who's actually quite good uh, yeah. <laughs> at being a housewife <laughs> Queer good at cooking. Yeah, that'd be a, a Wexford thing. I'd, I'd say queer might be a more Wexford thing. I don't know if we have anyone east of the, the black stairs uh, on the line. But uh, yeah, I, I always liked that because it, it's, it's not what you expect. And uh, There's some new slang as well, though, Nuna. I'm thinking of the word sick, which I don't really understand because it's not my generation, but it's used to describe something good, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, that wouldn't be, that'd be more like a, an English thing. But uh, I think I, I was just saying to somebody that, you know, you're getting old, you know, like my mother used to say to us all around the dinner table, I can't understand the word you're saying, because we'd be talking in our slang. And then a new generation comes along. And it's that idea that you're saying there, Colin, you use the opposite. So something sick in English means it's really good. But somebody says you look sick. And you don't know what they're saying. That can sound like quite the insult. Yeah. You think, I've got to put on my best gear. It makes they tell me I look sick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, make... the whole point of young slang is that the older generation doesn't know what you're talking about. So, you know, you have to you have to come up with something different. Just going back again to the Ulster Scots, which you mentioned before when we were talking uh, about some of the influences there, where you are, Nuala, you don't say something is deadly. You'd say class. Is that right? Well, that was when I was younger, we would have said class. There's lots of ones. I mean, again, they don't really mean, we'd say weaker, sticking out magic. Of course, in the last few years, everybody calls everything balls, which mm. I hate. <laughs> and if it's bad, we have mingin. Do you say mingin for yeah. dirty? Yeah. yeah. Boggin for dirty and leapin, leapin. Or wick was my favourite one. That's no. wick. That's wick. No, but that's I, news I to me. People, I asked some people for a few, and there was a couple that were so colourful. I love this one. It was Pauline Patterson who might be listening. She said her mum would say, her mother would say, should not, somebody old, should not tear in the plucking. <laughs> 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 which you can just immediately get. And another one, I think it's an Ulster Scots word, scunder, which means to embarrass about somebody behaving badly. Oh, he'd scunder a pig, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he'd scunder it. Or... <laughs> and minger, do you have minger for somebody we who's do, unattractive? We do, but that's, ba- that's mean. That's bad, isn't it, though? Yeah, no, that is bad. And annoying is a melter and a friend is a mucker. I think, it's, is mucker from Irish? No, muck's pig. Muck is Can't a pig, be. yeah. Mucker, no. And here's another one, finally, just another one that uh, somebody said to me. <laughs> a bit of a put down to somebody who gets a bit above themselves. You'd neither in ye nor on ye till I got the howl of ye. <laughs> <laughs> we leave it there. Thank you so much. That was such great fun. Nuala McKeever, Martin Beans Ward and Colm O'Regan. Keep sending in uh, your slang ones, particular to your region, 51551. We'll take a break. Text 51551. Today with Claire Byrne on RTE Radio 1.